Hey guys, Korth Camel ADV. I'm going to shoot an install video tonight for the 5 liter uh, Camel auxiliary fuel tank for the Yamaha 700 Tenere. This is a 2022 model. Um, we previously had an install video uh, for earlier generation. There's not really any changes between uh, with the bike, but we did make some changes to the kits uh, over the last year and a half. So instead of putting a bunch of revision uh, paperwork in your kit, we just wanted to shoot a new video so everything is nice and clean and simple. You can watch the video, know exactly what's going on, and your install isn't going to deviate from the video. That being said, if we have any more changes, um, we will be adding revision paperwork to this video, just kind of the way it goes as bikes change and as kits change. Um, we need a way to communicate that with you without shooting a brand new video every time. So please read the paperwork that comes in your kit. Uh, install should take you an hour, hour and a half, somewhere in there. Um, if you have pannier racks on your bike or a rear rack, it might take a little bit longer because you do need to remove that so that we can take the rear plastic off. Um, so just budget accordingly. So in your kit, you have quite a few parts. This of course is the main tank. We've got a front bracket here. We've got our fuel line. This is our vent line. Um, this is stiff plastic, it's polyurethane and um, it can be a bit of a pain to get work in position. We use it because it is nice and rigid and we don't have to worry about it kinking or getting um, squeezed if you over tighten zip ties. We need to make sure that your tank is breathing properly or else we can end up with vacuum locks. So if you get your kit and a day or two before you lay this out, put something heavy on this end, something heavy on this end and have it laid flat, um, it will help get it installed so it's not all coiled up. When you get it in the bag, it's gonna be in a real tight coil and it can be a challenge to work with. If you have a hairdryer or a heat gun, um, it's good to have it around. Uh, it will aid in putting in the uh, hose barbs that are gonna go in here. Got two passenger packs here. We have our cap with tether. We have a, uh, another bag of fittings and things. In there is a 90 degree elbow that is the vent for the back of the fuel tank. There's a check ball in here and there is metal epoxy in here. Uh, a lot of people will pry that out because they think it shouldn't be there and then the ball falls out, um, which is a problem because then it's no longer a check ball um, or check valve, I should say. So just leave that be, it's there for a reason. We have a fuel tank seal. You'll notice on this fuel cap how much motion there is so the seal in here is spring loaded um, and that's fine it works well enough um, until you put a tank bag on here so of course the fuel from the camel tank pulls into the main tank using vacuum or suction so you put a tank bag on here and it's putting pressure on your fuel cap, you're breaking the seal here and we lose vacuum, which is problematic. We have a rear tank bracket here, the main L bracket, uh, 90 degree hose. There are zip ties here. And then you can see there's two hanger brackets here. If you have a tail tidy, you're going to get this set up. If you have the OEM tail section, you're gonna get this set up. And the fastener packs are different. This one's got longer bolts and spacers, a couple small spacers, some extra small bolts. And this one for the tail tidy uh, has less in it. And the brackets are pretty similar. This one has kind of got some more square, square edges on it and this one's a little bit more round. Um, the heights of these are different because with the OEM tail section we need the longer spacers to clear uh, a big chunk of metal that's under there which means this bracket has to sit lower so it needs to be smaller than this one. So on this bike we have the big chunky OEM tail so we're going to be doing that install but I'm going to go over the uh, differences with this if you're installing it with our tail tidy this is the main bracket for our tail tidy um, and there's just a, a few small differences when we go to do the install first things first we're going to prep the tank uh, it's always a good idea to thread your fuel cap in 
right away before you start working on it keeps um, anything from potentially falling in here keeps any any dust debris whatever out um, small parts have a habit of falling into really annoying places um, so we're going to uh, bust out the fitting pack here and in here there are two stainless washers and we have two Viton washers so these stack on top of each other like that uh, and then we've got our 90 degree vent barb here and that is going to thread into the top of the fuel cap like so and you don't need to worry about tightness one now just yet and then we're going to come to the front here and we've got the same situation we've got our stainless washer and our Viton washer and we're going to thread that in and when we tighten this we're just going to do it just till you have the Viton seal just squishing out we're looking at a millimeter or half a millimeter somewhere in there I'm going to go into our fastener packs here and I'm going to grab two of these low profile dome head bolts, they're M6, and some blue Loctite, put a dab of blue, put blue pretty much on everything, uh, just on these, sorry actually we need four not two, um, we put blue pretty much on everything on an off-road oriented bike that sees a bunch of vibration, washboard and things, it's a good idea uh, to make sure those bolts don't come loose. We're gonna take our bracket, put it on the back. You wanna make sure you get all four started before you tighten any of them down uh, all the way. So our rear hanger bracket is going to sit back here. And we've got this big chunk of metal here that is part of the factory tail tidy, or it's tail section, I should say. Um, so this can't fit up right underneath here like we can with the tail tidy installed. So we've got these four fasteners here that hold this whole thing on. And we're gonna take these two out and we're gonna replace them with our bolts. Um, to do that though, we need to get underneath the rear plastic here to knock out two embedded nuts. So we're gonna take the seat off, we're gonna pop these side panels off and then take this piece of plastic off. So if you have a parts tray, it's a good idea to use one of those. We have quite a few fasteners in here. Um, you might want to just take note here, the black fastener goes here and then the silver ones go here. It's very strange, these fasteners are actually the same. There's no difference mechanically, uh, but that one's black and those are silver. I don't understand why Yamaha does some of the things they do. I'm sure there's a reason, but I don't know what it is. So an electric impact can speed up your disassembly. Um, I don't recommend using it to reassemble these parts. Uh, this is ABS plastic and it's quite brittle and it's very easy if you're using the impact when you're reassembling to break tabs off. So if you are going to do it, you need to be very careful. So like I mentioned, these are exactly the same other than the color. So I don't know why they did that, bizarre. And then when you go to do this, there's a rubber push pin right in this area here. So you need to carefully pop that out. You can see right where my fingers are here. The pin's about here. So you wanna pull right there. And it is quite easy to snap that guy off. You can see that there's not a lot of plastic holding it on. Um, so just be careful. You can break that very, very easily. And you can set this aside. I'm gonna go around to the other side. Um, I'm not gonna move the camera around because you know exactly what's going on. We just did it here. And again, it's got the same plastic pin. And right here, we've got a plastic rivet. Um, so we push the center of it in, and that just released it. And you can pop that out and set it in your bin. When you go to reinstall it, you're gonna pull the center all the way out, which allows the pedals here to retract and get it in a hole, and then you push it, flush is locked. So there's one on the back side here as well. Or I should say on the right-hand side. And we're gonna come underneath here. There's one fastener here. 
one here, one here, and same on the other side. So we're going to pop those off. And then again on the other side. And then we've got five Allen head uh, buttons here. We're going to pop them out. They're a four mil, uh, four mil Allen bit. And it is a good idea to have a magnet handy or a pair of really long needle nose pliers. Um, I just dropped a bolt in here. There's lots of crevices for the bolts to end up. So just make sure that you have a way of getting them out. So these things are awesome. Um, any auto parts store is going to have them. Amazon, um, the usual, usual suspects. And we're going to set our, set our bolt bin uh, on the bench. So with all the fasteners out, we're going to grab the plastic here. We're just going to spread it a little bit at the front. And then we're going to lift the front up a little bit and push backward. And at the back, there's a little hook here and there's a tab. So these are the embedded nuts that we're going to be removing. Uh, so we're going to take the bolts up from the bottom. We're going to thread a special bolt in that we include in the kit. And then you're going to give that a smack with a hammer, which is going to drive these embedded nuts out. And then we're going to put our fastener in here instead. So whether you have the tail tidy installed set up or the OEM tail section, there's going to be a bolt in here that is usually going to be black oxide um, and we are using the black oxide just so it stands out from the others. If this happens to be zinc, then just look for the bolt that's longer um, and that's going to be the one you use to knock the embedded nuts out. Uh, there's nothing particularly special about the black one, it's just we are doing that so it's easier to identify. Uh, supply chain issues being what they are, sometimes we aren't able to get what we want, so you may end up with a, a zinc or a stainless bolt instead. But just whichever one is the longest, that's what you're going to use to take these embedded nuts out. So this is very straightforward. We're just going to come from the bottom here, and we're going to thread that bolt in about that far, which is right here. You can see the bolt is just flush with the top of the nut. And then we're going to give that a smack with a hammer. And then we're just going to remove that embedded nut. We're going to set that aside. You're not going to use it again. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. And thread this in and give it a couple of smacks. So when you're doing that, you want to make sure you don't get too crazy with the hammer and smack any of the plastic. It's pretty easy to make a mess. Now, if you are using the, if you have a standard OEM tail section, you've got the long bolts here in the spacers. And these guys are going to drop in those holes. So now when we take the embedded nut, the hole size is almost eight millimeters. Some bikes, these are gonna drop in here perfectly. And other ones are gonna have to run a drill bit through here. So a 5 16 or an eight mil bit, you're gonna have to run through real quick um, just to clean up that hole so these bolts can drop through. So just pop some safety glasses or face shield on before you do this. So now you want to take a shop vac or uh, compressed air. You've got the little bits of metal that are in here. Um, and you want to make sure you blow these out or vacuum them out. They'll sit in here and rust and kind of make a mess. So just make sure you get that cleaned out first. So now we're going to take our bolts here. We've got a tab on here that keeps these from turning when you're putting the nut in from the bottom, like so, so you don't have to get it the, uh, the heads here. If you go to take the rear mounting bracket off, um, these will keep the bolts from turning. So then we can reassemble the back of the bike. We're going to put the rear bracket on first though, before we do that. So we've got our bracket here and we've got these long spacers. that. And then we're going to take a flat washer and a nylon and get that started on both sides. And then we can tighten these. And you can see these tabs here keep um, that bolt from turning when we're tightening it. So 
so there's no need to have a wrench in the top here at the same time. So we have had a few people ask why um, we need to knock those embedded nuts out. Uh, and the reason is just strength. Um, with the length of these bolts and spacers to clear this bracket here, these bolts are, are quite long. And if they're six mil, if you drop the bike on the tank side, uh, especially if you don't have pannier racks, the side load on M6 bolts here is simply too much. They're just not strong enough to hold that load. So we've gone to an eight mil bolt uh, with the spacers, which is substantially stronger. So if you're running our tail tidy bracket um, for the last year or so, uh, they have had these strengthening ribs in here and it just makes the whole thing more rigid. Um, so when you go to install your rear hanger bracket, which is gonna go that direction, it's not gonna sit flat. Let me get the right light in here so you can see that. We've got uh, the gap here between the tail tidy and the bracket. So we can't have that and get the bolts tightened properly. So if you get the tail tidy uh, prepped kit, it's got these shorter bolts because we don't need the long spacers that we just installed uh, on the bike, but we've got these short kind of stout spacers and they just go on the tail tidy like that. And they are just a little bit taller than those ribs. So we're gonna go like that. And then these guys come down from the top, same as they did um, on the OEM. So you can see the short spacers in here that takes up the, takes up the gap here and keeps this uh, rear hanger bracket from riding on the ribs. So even if you have a tail tidy that doesn't have the ribs, you're going to want to install these spacers or this bracket is gonna to be too short for you. With the rear hanger bracket installed, we can go ahead and put the rear plastic back on. And like I mentioned before, this tab here, this loop has to go over the tab on the tail light. Um, that's the only real tricky part here. So we're just gonna spread the plastic a little bit and wiggle that on. And if you've got it looped, you shouldn't be able to push this up. So just make sure this is sitting down flat where it should and everything looks good. So we've got the back points here. There's the five uh, button head Allens. We're gonna get them started. They all have these uh, brass and plastic washers on them. So just make sure those are seated properly when you put them in. It's important we get all of this stuff started before we tighten anything uh, down fully. And then we're gonna put these uh, plastic rivets in. So this one's in here and we're just going to push it in to lock it and that's it and then same around the back side keep saying back side of course i mean just the right hand side of the bike and then we're going to go and put the fasteners in the underside here the six of them uh, they are a bit of a pain in the butt so the shoulder bolts that came out of here are the same as on the triangle uh, front pieces so you don't need to worry about getting them mixed up uh, a torque screwdriver is the easiest way to get these in um, we've got the plastic or the uh, metal captured nuts, which can be a bit of a handful getting started. If you slightly cross thread one, uh, it's pretty much toast and you probably need to replace it. Um, you'll have a real hard time getting these guys started if you damage that embedded nut or the captured nut, I should say. And when I say captured nut like this one here, you need to make sure that you get this started totally square and don't force it. And sometimes it's simply a matter of grabbing a different bolt and trying it. It just might have, it's like some of these fasteners almost have a, don't be dumb. Come on, come on. So yeah, this is the uh, this is the challenge with these body parts on this bike. The plastic is so brittle. If you force this stuff, you end up breaking the tab off of it, um, and then 
your plastic flops around. Um, truth be told, if you have rackless soft bags and your bags are just resting on here, uh, you're likely to blow all these plastic fasteners out of here. They're just, it's just the way that it is, unfortunately. They're not very strong. I wish that Yamaha had used different plastic on this bike. This is ABS. It's very brittle. It holds paint well um, and looks good, uh, but it's very brittle rather than, or compared to something like dirt bike plastic, which is um, uh, like the, the KTM 790, 890 uh, uses more kind of traditional dirt bike plastic. and It's far more durable. Uh, it just doesn't hold paint as well. So I'm sure that Yamaha used uh, this plastic because, I mean, this is obviously a street bike. It's not a dirt bike. Um, so most people are going to ride it on the road. Uh, it just does not, it doesn't fare very well, even with minor, minor contact. So these are all going in pretty well. I shouldn't have said that though. I got one left here. Oh, I did get it. And I really like to use the screwdriver on these guys. You just have a much better um, feel of how much torque you're putting into, uh, into the fasteners. And so I've got them all started. So I'm just going to kind of do a final snug here. We're gonna come up here with our T-handle and tighten these. Again, don't over tighten them. They're into metal um, here and the last one. And then these two are into plastic. You don't generally break these, uh, but they can break off of the, the plastic here. So just again, be real, real careful with that. So we've got three, it's fuel line and it necks down to quarter inch. Uh, and I know some people might say, well, what's the point of using three eighths hose? If you're gonna neck down a quarter, why don't you just do quarter the whole way? Uh, the three eighths hose does transfer better. Uh, we've tested it on uh, on a few different a few different bikes in a bunch of different conditions, and on this T7, um, the bigger hose neck down works better than quarter all the way through. Um, when you go to do this, we have the Gator back hoses. You can give them a quick shot of silicone or WD-40. Just gonna slide this in like so. I'm gonna take one of our hose clamps and slide it over here, and you don't need to totally tighten this up right now. Just snug it up so we don't have to worry about it floating around. Uh, we may have to adjust the clamp position when we get it on the bike so it's not rubbing on anything. So just that one connector in this end. We can set that aside and then we've got um, the quarter inch hose menders that are going to go in here. Um, because this material is a little bit stiff it's easier to use the heat gun to put a little bit of heat into here before you slide that in. If you have a vise it's great. Um, you can grab this in the vise and then you can have a spare hand for the heat gun. You certainly don't need a vise to do it, but it makes life a little bit easier. Don't crush it or anything, just snug tension. And you don't want to overheat it, so it's better to put some heat into it than try it. And if you don't quite have it, then put a little bit more. And that's what we get here. So we're gonna come up on the right hand side of the bike. Um, if you have a crash bar mount, this is a little more challenging. Normally we would take this bracket off here and behind, but to get that off, we have to take this off, which involves taking the whole crash bar off. Um, and I don't wanna deal with that right now. Uh, it's kind of, it's unnecessary. Um, there's a tab on the back of this metal bracket here that's holding this one way valve. And it's just rubber mounted. So you can push this off and we've got it off there. And then there's two hose clamps. Take these spring clamps with pliers, just pull this up and then pop that hose off. And then you can work this down from the bottom and same thing, grab that spring clamp and give this a twist. And we're gonna set this aside, it's not going to be reused. So the lower hose goes into the charcoal canister, which is right back here. If you look at your clutch arm, right behind it is the uh, charcoal canister. So that's emissions stuff. Quick rundown of how um, the camel tank works and why it works. This hose here is a vent off your main tank. Uh, and it might seem a little counterintuitive that the vent hose is at the bottom of the tank. There's actually a steel straw in here that's brazed in and goes all the way to the top. So kind of like a snorkel if you go diving. Um, so this is sitting in the air pocket at the top of the tank. 
So as your main tank, the volume starts to drop when the fuel gets used, we create vacuum in here and that air gets pulled in through this hose. So we're plugging the camel tank into this hose. We're plugging the vent off the camel tank into this lower hose. So the main tank, when the fuel is expanding due to heat, is breathing into the camel tank and then the camel tank is breathing into the emission system. So we're not, we don't have fuel vapor uh, just out into the atmosphere. But when the level in the main starts to drop, we create vacuum and now fuel is being drawn from the camel tank and it refills the main tank. So it's all automatic, there's no valves, nothing you have to mess with. Uh, the plumbing is very straightforward on this. Running the hoses can be a bit of a challenge, especially if you have the Yamaha crash bars. They mount to this boss at the back here, which um, this motor is used on the MT-07, and I believe that's the rear shock mount. Um, the Yamaha crash bars actually bolt through there and then they have tubes that come out here. So it makes running these hoses uh, a bit of a challenge. It's doable, but it is, um, it's a bit of a handful to get them through. You're gonna come up over top of those tubes and then you have far less room to work in here. So uh, you're gonna have your work cut out for you if you have those Yamaha crash bars. So we include these spring clamps um, and they are intended to be used uh, on this section. This fitting is so tight that you don't really need these. If we don't include them, we get comments, why are there no clamps um, on this hose? So we do put them in the kit. I don't ever run these on my own bike. Um, the gator back, the barbs here, uh, this is one way. Once this slides in here, we don't have to worry about uh, anything leaking. We don't have to worry about it pulling off. Plus we still have this um, small hose clamp here and that's really all we need. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. If you have silicone spray or WD-40, um, you can even just actually use spit on these. It works, just, it works just fine. And you're gonna slide, slide this in. Trying to do this stuff and not block the view of the camera and not block um, all of the light and still do the, still do the work is a bit of a challenge sometimes. So we've got it there. And then we can take that spring clamp and you can probably do it with your hand. You don't need the, uh, don't need the pliers. And if your vent hose is all um, coiled up like this, you're gonna wanna make sure you uh, twist it. I'm gonna move that clamp for a minute. You're gonna wanna make sure that you twist this because we can't kink this rubber hose on here. If you have any kinks in any of the hoses, uh, you will cause a vacuum lock, which will stall your bike. So you wanna make sure that this stuff is all routed um, really nice and uh, smooth bends, large radius bends that, um, that don't have any sharp kinks in them. And this is what I was saying before, if you can lay this hose out, uh, it makes a lot, life a lot easier. And we're gonna run this, I'm just gonna run this through here. And you will be swearing at me when you go to run this hose um, through here. So the straighter you can get it, um, the better, <laughs> the better it will be. And I'm going to show you, um, from the other side where, where I'm putting this, um, but it's really difficult with the, the camera and the lights and everything to get everything in one shot here. So we're going over top of the, uh, tube cross member that the shock mounts onto. And again, I'll show you from the other side when I get this all run where it needs to go. But it's, we're going on top of this cross member here and underneath the air box. So we're over top of the shock. And I'm looking at where this is and it's gonna sit and rub on the motor. So I'm gonna turn that, uh, turn that clamp. Like so. So we've got that in there with a nice big radius on there, no kinks, which is perfect. Uh, things, we'll have to uh, double check everything after we put the fuel line on, because that will crowd uh, things a little bit as well. So we're gonna take the fuel line, and we gotta come behind this bracket here. And we're plugging into that vent line there. And 
again with the uh, little spring clamp. And like if you left this like kinked like this, you would have uh, you would have a problem. Fuel wouldn't flow properly. So make sure that you don't do that. And then same thing, we're gonna run this on top of that cross member. And this guy is uh, larger diameter, so it makes things a little bit trickier. And I've done um, this install video a few times, and it's a real challenge to get it shot properly um, so you guys can see what's going on. So I find the easiest way to do it is actually just to make sure that I show you kind of after the fact where everything goes rather than um, actually the, uh, the install. I'm gonna put the section with the clamp and the uh, barb is gonna go behind this metal bracket here. And we're gonna put a zip tie around here to keep it from moving around. It's the best way to keep any kinks out of that line. So we've got a nice big loop here on this uh, vent hose into our fuel line. And we need to make sure when we zip tie this, so this will be less of a concern for people that have the standard clutch arm, but if you have our one finger clutch arm that's a little bit longer, you need to make sure that um, these hoses aren't sitting here and we're not gonna have the clutch arm rubbing back and forth on the hose. Obviously that's a bad idea. You don't wanna have the hoses um, banging around anywhere that hoses are rubbing. You have a potential for uh, them wearing through which is a terrible idea. So I kind of pre-bent that zip tie a little bit so that it would curl itself around. Grab the end with the needle nose pliers here. So I've got the two hoses and they are looped around the two hard lines for the rear brake. Um, and I'm just going to, they don't need to be super tight. We just want them um, so that they're not rubbing on anything. Snip the tail there and roll the buckle to the back side or yeah, roll it around here so it's less visible. It just makes for a cleaner install. So we intentionally left this piece off so you could have a little better visibility. And like I said, the shock mount is right here. And this is that tube, the cross member tube. So we've got the hoses here. You can see the vent line, which is right in front of the light here. And then this one is the fuel line and they are coming over top of the cross member that the shock is attached to. So when we route these, we need to make sure that uh, they are well clear of the chain, and this is a chain roller. So at full compression, uh, the chain will contact this and this will be spinning. So the chain is in uh, kind of close proximity here to these hoses. So we need to make sure that we get those um, routed properly so that they are not in any way, shape or form in harm's way from the chain. So we've got some electrical cables here that are quite stiff. Um, they're very well wrapped. So we're gonna grab um, onto them with a zip tie here. And we're going to loop our fuel lines to them. These things are well um, up and out of the way of the chain and that chain roller. And I'm gonna put the zip tie around the buckle on this electrical connector. It's just gonna keep these wires from chafing. And this doesn't need to be super tight, um, just enough to hold everything together. Snip our tail and roll that buckle upward. All right, we are in the home stretch here. So in the kit, there are four zip tie anchors um, and we're gonna place three of them on here and one of them on one of the tank brackets. So this bike is brand new. It's got like a hundred kilometers on it. Um, so this is fairly clean, but we do want to make sure that we give this a good wipe down. You can use uh, soapy water. You can use brake clean. Um, just if you're going to make sure you test it on a small area first, brake clean is pretty gnarly um, and it can make a mess of some plastics. Uh, I have not had any issues on the T7s with the brake clean that we use, but that doesn't mean the brand that you might use isn't going to be an issue. Um, so we're just gonna give this a wipe here and let it sit for a minute to dry. So you wanna make sure, like with any adhesives, you don't touch the sticky part with your filthy hands. 
Of course, we've been working on the bike, so there's all kinds of all kinds of gross stuff on her hands currently. And find a good edge here. So we've got the adhesive, so we've got the grab handle here, and there's these little pockets. Um, the first anchor, we're gonna put uh, about three quarters of an inch ahead of these, um, the hand grab here. So right down here, this inner fender piece ends right here, and we're just gonna go right in the middle of that. And give that a push. And then our third one is going to go basically right across from this bolt um, on this edge here. Not just right here. Then we're gonna to come to the back of our tank and on this bracket, we're gonna put the um, fourth anchor. And again, just make sure that the bracket is clean it should be because it's just out of the kit, but there may be a little bit of dust on it or who knows what, like so. So this one, um, we're going to, there's a hose that comes off of here and then runs down. So we're gonna put this one on a little bit of an angle. If you put it on straight, it's not gonna hurt anything either, like that. And to make life a little bit easier, we're going to pre, Pre-feed the zip tie through. Just leave it super loose though, like so. And we're gonna do the same thing um, under the fender on the bike. And we've got our hoses here. We're gonna take off the uh, pillion peg. So this customer has some other accessories. So we're gonna, um, we can't put uh, this bracket underneath ours because the holes don't line up so we're gonna have to go over top of and that's just gonna depend on kind of your um, accessory load for lack of a better lack of a better term and we're gonna be doing some uh, some messing around with this unrelated to the install so I'm not going to put blue Loctite on these I normally would and I suggest that you do as well but we're just gonna get this stuff started here We're just gonna leave those tight enough so the bracket will slide back and forth a little bit. If you do not run pillion pegs in the bag here, there are some M8 by 20 uh, Allen head bolts and M8 flat washers. So you're gonna use those to attach this bracket instead of um, stacking all this stuff in here. But that'll just depend on what you have for accessories. We've got four holes here. And so there's two sets. There's there's these and these, and that just allows you to drop the back of the tank a little bit, depending on what cargo rack you have. Um, some of them are a little bit closer to the uh, vent on our tank or to the filler neck, so you're able to drop the um, able to drop the tank by about 10 mil just by moving that. And this fifth hole here is for a zip tie to go through the tank cap tether. So we're going to do that right now. And all we're doing with this guy is taking one of the zip ties. This is not any sort of anti-theft or, um, <laughs> or anything like that. It is simply to keep you from riding off at the gas station without your tether or without your uh, cap installed and losing the cap and then being um, in a panic to get another one. So we're just going to set that up and out of the way. Now when you go to install um, the tank with the OEM tail section, uh, you are going to use these longer M6 bolts that are included. And there are two spacers. So those go on your bracket here. Um, you don't get this hardware with the tail tidy installed version. So that's just important. Uh, important difference between the two. So there's a bit, there have been some questions about that and I just wanna make sure that that's super crystal clear. And so we're gonna take our tank and set it on here. And take our bolts and our spacers. 
So the bolts go through this bracket like that with the spacer. And we're going to put this in the lower set of holes here. Like so. You can kind of see what's going on here. And then we're going to put our nylock nuts and washers on the back side of that. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to use these other two uh, low profile M6 bolts. Um, there were six of them. We used four of them to hold this bracket on. And now the other two are going to hold the tank on. And we're not going to totally tighten these. We're going to come to the top. And then we can come down here and snug these guys up. Almost done. So we've got our subframe right here. And we're going to take a zip tie. And we're going to put it around both of the hoses and around the subframe. Again, we want to keep in mind the travel of the chain, just where it's going, what it's doing, and make sure that we are not in its way. So we do give you a little bit extra fuel line. Um, a lot of that is depending on your um, crash bar system, you might need a little bit of uh, wiggle room to reroute the hoses around weirdness with your crash bars. So we do give you that extra bit. So when you do this, you want to make sure, obviously you don't cut it too short. So you can cut it where you think it's gonna be, add an inch to it or something like that. And then you can always cut a little bit more. So I'm gonna cut about a half inch off that. If you have tubing cutters or hose cutters, it works even better. And I'm going to be right back to the measurement that I thought it was, but it's obviously easier to cut it a little long and then trim to length than going the other direction. So we're gonna slide our other hose clamp on here. And again, if you have WD-40 or uh, silicone spray, it makes life a lot easier putting these on. tighten our hose clamp. So our fuel line is run and is well up and out of the way. So now we got to go to uh, the back side of the tank to run our vent line, which can be a bit tricky. So we've got our 90 degree hose here. We're going to put it on our uh, vent hose and run it between the bike. So remember, we didn't totally tighten this. Uh, we wanted to be able to move it. And then we've got this jam nut here. I'm going to tighten that just until the seal starts to bulge out. And then you can see where this guy is running here. And depending on what pannier racks you have or um, rear cargo racks, this location is going to change a little bit. And like I said, this whole thing can be bumped up if your, uh, if your current system uh, allows it. All right. So we have our vent hose here. We've got the first zip tie anchor here. So we're not gonna totally tighten that just yet. We need a little bit of wiggle room. The final connection here with this hose can be um, a little bit on the annoying side. So, so same thing, we're going to mark where we want to cut this and then we can do that. Next 
heat up the end of the hose here. easier for you to do I'm not straddling cameras and cameras and lights then we can tighten our zip ties when you're happy with this location we're gonna put a hose clamp on here You should wear safety glasses when you're putting this clamp on. These spring clamps are pretty, pretty tight. Um, they go flying, they can, they can fly far. And if you take it in the eye, you're gonna have a bad day. And we've got one fastener left. This is an M5 and it goes into the fuel cap tether. We're gonna put Loctite on it. Now this bolt is intentionally too long for the blind hole in the cap and that's so it bottoms out and the cap is still able to spin so if the bolt was uh, the same length as the blind hole then when you went to take this off it wouldn't spin properly So we're gonna put our trim pieces back on, put a little bit of grease onto the pin that goes into this rubber donut. It's just gonna help you get it off next time without breaking that pin. Like so, and a little bit of wiggling. There is, should have pointed that out. So there is a second pin here. It's not a, it's not a barb though, it's just a pin. And there's a rubber piece here. So when you put this in, you're gonna to have to get that one in and then this one for this to sit flush. like so and then remember our black bolt was at the front and you can see that it's got some green on here that's factory loctite so we've put a little bit of blue on it uh, this fastener goes into a metal bracket so you want to use loctite on it so these nuts back here are capture nuts into plastic and you don't want to add any loctite to those um, you're going to increase the chances of breaking that plastic tab off the next time you go to remove it. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So we're done. That wraps up our install of the five liter Camel auxiliary fuel tank for the Yamaha T7. As always, if you have any questions, info at camel-adv.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>